Check, please. Hey everybody, welcome back to Everything Money. In this video, we're gonna talk about Microsoft. We'll show you the numbers about where this company is headed. They bought Activision Blizzard a couple months ago and we're gonna update you on where we stand on this company. We'll show you what you should be paying for Microsoft using our stock analyzer tool and our amazing software. We'll go to Mo and he will trade it at the end of the video. So please stay tuned. Paul, give me your thoughts on Microsoft, this colossal company. Seth, love Microsoft. Great company, great cash flow. 10 years ago, it was my value play when literally I had the CEO of a tech company telling me, Paul, I wouldn't buy Microsoft if I got it for free with $50 billion of cash sitting in the bank account. I still wouldn't take it. That's how crazy it was. Now, let's go to our eight pillar software. Let's look at more of the fundamentals of Microsoft. Microsoft, and guys, remember, we have live stock, uh, real-time uh, stock prices now. I love that. Man, Microsoft is down 350 peak. 350 peak at the 283. That's a 20% drop, guys. I mean, these things do happen. Yeah, Paul, so we use these eight pillars to screen stocks. And as always, we like when one and eight are red. Well, not like, but it just means we need to exhibit extreme patience in that this stock is overvalued in our opinions. Yeah, one and eight are our PE and our price of free cash flow over the last five years. When they're at X, but all the others are checks. Listen, look at this return on invested capital, 17%. Almost double what we want. Revenue growth, $82 billion growth in the last five years. Net income growth, 57 of that $82 billion was profit. They bought back some shares, which when the company's expensive, we don't necessarily want them buying back shares because what they're doing is they're investing your cash as an investor into an overpriced company. Very little debt and cash flow growth. So let's go right through it. Let's just go to the income statement on our software. I mean, look at this, Seth. Steady, just consistent revenue growth the last five years. 102 five years ago, 185 last year. Paul, you've taught me that consistent growth, uh, although slow and boring, is somewhat better in companies because without that huge rise, we're not going to maybe exhibit that huge fall. And I've sort of implemented this in my real life, my businesses. Is you kind of want that get rich quick scheme Everybody thinks that. And then, yeah. well, not only that, Seth, the faster a company grows their revenue, the more excited the market gets and the more hype the stock gets and the more nosebleed it gets. So I like the boring growth that everybody's like, oh, this thing is growing, you know, single digits. Okay, great. Because everybody's going to ignore it. I'm going to be able to buy it on the cheap. That's good. Net income growth. Again, you scroll down a little bit, 13.8 billion to 72 billion. Now keep in mind, folks, this 13.8 is a big drop from the previous year and a lot lower than the next year. So somebody tells me there was some sort of write-off in that year. Not a big deal. I'm not even paying attention to it because everything else is great. You know, one of the things we want to look at is a balance sheet. See the health of the business. Microsoft has $175 billion in cash and cash equivalents. That's a lot of freaking money. And guess what? Their total liabilities are $180. So they can almost pay off all of their liabilities with their check right now. And you still get the cash flowing business along the way. I love it. It's astonishing to see that just five years ago, they brought in 13 billion in net income and that they paid 67 billion for Activision Blizzard. That's Well, remember that 13 billion was probably from a write-off. The previous year was 22 and the next year was 33. So if you look at a long-term trend- I see. Yeah, but I like the Activision play because you know Xbox, they wanted to get control of some titles that they could sit there and say, hey, I don't think, I think we're going away. You know, I actually thought about the other day, Whenever a new system comes out or a new phone, I'm just going to buy it and keep it in the package all wrapped up and sell it 30 years from now for like 30 times more than I paid for. That would be a pretty good investment, don't you think? Because I mean, go look up the original Nintendo. Forget about it. Oh, how much did that how thing... How much is it? I, I don't know. Look at, why don't you look it up, Mo, while we're doing this? In the box, I mean, yeah. In the box and yeah. everything. Is it like Nintendo 64? Just no, Nintendo. <laughs> Nintendo 64. How young is this kid? The original Nintendo. He's, he's just playing Bond. There were freaking two Nintendos before the Nintendo my first, 64. My first thing I ever got was PlayStation 2. <laughs> oh my God. Look at this guy. He's adorable. So guys, one of the main foci of this channel is cash flow, right? I love looking at cash flow over earnings because it's harder to manipulate the cash flow number. So we go to the cash flow statement. And your Uncle Paul, Uncle Tim, and Uncle Seth added this line. Mo too. Oh, and Mo <laughs> added this line to the cash flow statement. So it makes the math a lot easier for you. Because look at five years ago. Oh, oh you got look. a comment there, Paul. Look, new exclusive content added. That's how nice. Guys, this is you're going to find out about this soon. But anyways, scroll we scroll down, down a little bit. $33 billion. Remember, this is the year they did $13 billion in revenue, but they had $33 billion in cash flow. Wow. That just goes to show there was a disconnect. 
and then 60 billion last year. So guys, it's a value. It's, it's all about the, the valuation. Now, does that mean that we shouldn't buy Microsoft stock? Not necessarily. As Seth said earlier, we have the stock analyzer tool as part of our software. What it allows you to do is we don't know the future, but every investment will be over a long period of time, the present value of all future cash flow. And if Microsoft can grow at 30% a year for the next 10 years, would I pay 40 times earnings for it? Absolutely. <laughs> but it's probably not going to grow 30% a year for the next 10 years. If this method of investing, look at the numbers, speaks to you and you felt alone in your investing journey, you can have the everything money software that Paul's using. Paul, tell them how. So we created the software because our users made a request and we delivered. We delivered the software. This software allows you to go investigate these companies using our eight pillar process without waiting for us to make videos. In it, you get everything listed here. The eight pillars, retirement calculator, stock analyzer tool, eight pillar portfolio that allows you put, to put up to 50 companies at once and see how the companies all together look as a portfolio. Exclusive video content, as you saw in that modal that popped up. Every day we post exclusive content from Seth Mo and I just for our users, the people who use our software here. And by the way, it's all available on your phone as well in a mobile app. All available. Watch list. This is the newest edition. Now, and you'll see it next in our stock analyzer tool. When you create a price that you want to buy the stock at, you can have our software tell you when the price has been hit. But guys, there's more. All of these things coming are all going to be included in the software. Whatever you sign up for today includes all that. But the biggest aspect, the best aspect of our website and our software and our app is the EM community. Mm -hmm. There are over 6,000 people here, guys, talking every single day about all the investment ideas. I'm sure, like me, like you, I get very frustrated researching stocks. It's grueling. But with 6,000 people, you can get everybody's ideas because everybody at some point has looked at the company and has different ideas. You can go into the software. You can search MSFT or Microsoft, see where the conversations are, and specifically go there and have a conversation about it. It's a no-brainer, guys. All of this is available for $1 per day, less than a cup of coffee. $1 per day. If you can increase your returns by 1% or 2% or miss the Palantirs and all the crashes of Rivian, Nikola, all those things by having a process and save 1% or 2% of losses a year, this will lead to hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars, $1 per day. Go to everythingmoney.com. Or for our international people, go to Patreon, sign up now. You're locked in at that price. Even as the price goes up every single month, you're locked in the price you sign up at. I love when you say that, uh, you know, avoid that huge crash of a that, That's what people don't realize. Like, good investing isn't necessarily about finding the home runs. It's about avoiding the big falls. The 75% the Palantir does, the 80% the Peloton does. All these big crashes that we sat there and said, this doesn't even make sense to us. Now, somebody might sit there and say, yeah, but you didn't see Tesla. I think Tesla is going to end up being one of those Palantir and Peloton ones that you just go, what the heck happened here? Well, we didn't see the value in the price making sense. So anyhow, let's go to our stock analyzer tool for Microsoft because it will tell us what we should pay based on our assumptions. So guys, you can pick one to 20 in terms of years of analysis. I always start with 10. Now, revenue growth. In the last 10 years, they've done 10.9%. In the last five years, they've done 16%. Your job is to be conservative, okay? I'm going to sit here and go six. Mo, what do, I want to hear Mo's numbers too. Oh, he's already heard me. Six what? Yeah, six is good. Six, eight, I don't know, six, eight, ten. Okay, I, mean, I agree. What if it stays at ten? I agree. Profit margins, uh, Moe. Um, why don't you do 27, 20, you're low? 29. Oh, well, low 10, is 27? 10, yeah. See, I think low of 25. Well, there's a lot of competition in there. That's their, true, but they do. I mean, who doesn't use their software? Okay. I mean, everyone uses their I'll software. I'll go 27, 28, 29. Can we, can we compromise? Can we do 26, 28, and 30? Okay. Because I want to give it more on the high side. Sure. Because as they get more cloud computing and these things, I think the margin could go up. But I think at the low side, if they start to see some more competition, they have to drop their margin a little bit. Okay. What about free cash flow margin? Same? Um, slightly higher? I think slightly higher. Slightly I think higher. 27, 29, and 31. Okay. P.E. Now, <laughs> guys, the P.E. currently is 30. Mo. Um, Guys, the bigger the company is, the less growth it has, the lower the P has to be. 12, 14, 16. Um, really? Okay. 13, 16. 13, Again, 15, I 17. On, I think 13. Second. Yeah. Or 14, 16, 18. I mean. I think you're right. No, no, you're right. I think 14, 16, 18. And the reason being is this is a big company that has staying power. It has a moat. Yeah, it does. To me, you should be willing to pay more for that. 
let's do 12 and a half percent return because you sh- it allows you to put a margin of safety in there as opposed to the 10% return. And if you invest in an ETF, you're going to get nine or 10%. Analyze button. Boom. Guys, look at this. Our price, a low of about 100, a high of about 175, and a middle range about 130. And the great news is, guys, these plus marks right here are the watch list. You add it in there. You can just click it, goes to it, or you can add here to the watch list, add your notification. And if I want Microsoft to notify me when it gets below 130, I hit that, notify me. Those, it's in my watch list. Those now. numbers make perfect sense based on the PE that we put in. Well, yeah. let, me, let, right me, now. let me explain real quick, folks at home. So that number is not what we think the stock should be be in a few years or what it should be now. This is what you need to be buying that stock to get the said return. If you want a lower return, Paul, let's you can lower the there. return. You can get Guys, you want a 5% return? Watch what happens to the, to the stock price. So let's go to 5% return all across the board. Boom. Buy it it's up, a buy baby. On the high side. On the low side, go 225. This also means if you pay 225 for it, you should expect about a 5% return on your money based on my assumptions above. If you pay 306 for it and it hits the high assumptions, you'll still make about 5% return. Yeah, I bring this up, Paul, because you explain this to me when you're buying real estate and maybe you at home should be paying attention as well. The concept of we're not just buying a stock and hoping it goes up. We're setting projections like you would buy a real estate unit and then work backwards from there. I need this return or I'm just simply not buying the stock. The so house, I mean, the there's a lot of capital put up there for 5% return. So guys, remember, you can never change the price you pay once you bought a stock. Can you dollar cost average lower? Yes, but first acquisition is always there. Second thing is that 5% return is an annualized 5% return. One year it could be down 10, next year it's up 15. The whole point is over a 10 year period, you're gonna get an annualized return of 5%. Isn't your money worth more than 5% return a year? That's it. It's a very simple process. Now, does that mean you shouldn't buy Microsoft? No, Mo day trades Microsoft. He long-term trades Microsoft where the fundamentals don't even matter. Mm -hmm. Mo, show us. So the thing that's interesting about Microsoft, this I consider this one of the FANG stocks. This is, I mean, I, it should be called FANG M in my opinion. But look at this. You're below all four major moving averages right now. That is not very good. And now I'm going to show you the long-term chart because this is what I would want to do with Microsoft. So you're, remember, you're below all those four major moving averages. These are your three big drops that we had in the market. March, uh, January 28th, March 8th, something like that, February 24th, whatever it was. Once this drops below those levels, I think you have a lot of room to run to about this 260 level. And then beyond that, it could just keep going down, down, down. Like, uh, well, who says that, Flow Rider? There you go, down. No, that's, um, is that Flow Rider? Jason Derulo? I don't know. So, but this is a, you have a, very big downtrend right now. You're below those four major moving averages. Everything is going against you on Microsoft right now. This, to me, is going to go in the Bid and Ask Nation shorting channel and on my watch list because this is something that I definitely want to put on a short-term uh, 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 shorting watch list. Now, this is something that we look at pretty much every day, Microsoft from a day trading perspective. And you're, and you're seeing it kind of right now. It's 10, 30, 10, 15 in the morning. You're over 80%. Your volume's kind of weak. What we would want is a little bit more buying volume here. And if we can get an engulfing candlestick, a green engulfing candlestick, this would be a day trade. I don't know if it's going to develop that way, but Microsoft is something that is always happening in the bid and ask day trading live streams. So. Yeah, by the way, Mo, right now, of course, folks, Mo's talking about that day trading in our chat every single morning when Paul and I, Mo, day trade, people are talking about People are talking about the day trades. I'm certain they're going to talk about Microsoft today because it's entering that sweet spot. Yeah, it could be. Go ahead, Paul. Tell us about the analysts. So, guys, a lot of people like to look at analysts, and I always tell everyone, just be cautious. But here are the analyst projections for the next 10 years on Microsoft earnings per share. And you can see 944 for 2022, 37. That's four times more 10 years from now. Great. But if you apply a 15 PE to this, to this $37 in the future, what is that? For 550 bucks? For the share price, if you're paying 306 today, it's not really that great. And keep in mind also, it's only one analyst here. But this is a good idea to get an idea of where analysts fall. Look at this. Look at uh, three years from now. Look at the range of earnings, low to high by analysts. 23 analysts. The low is $10 per share. The high is $14.29. That's a big difference. Mm -hmm. And they all have different reasons why they came up with that. Also, revenue estimates for the next 10, 10 years for Microsoft. 198 for this year. 470 for 10 years from now. And look, the revenue growth is declining. Why? 
because the bigger and bigger a company gets, the harder it is to grow. The growth rate will be slower. Keep that in mind when you look at your investments. Don't look at the past and say they're going to mimic the past. Could they do better? Absolutely, but it's not very likely. So on Microsoft, in summation, I'm just saying be patient, but it has every other attribute I love about a company. I just got to be patient and wait for it to hit my sweet spot of a price. Be patient with us. Watch more videos. Fondle the like. Subscribe. We'll see you next one.